Field opened back in 1924 with the Bears becoming tenants in 71. And what a home field advantage it has become here in Chicago. Today we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Chicago Bears. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Play fake, Mayfield. The quick throw knocked away, it's incomplete. Ah, uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. It's a gain of 11 and the Bucks have a first down. That's a very nice game there. A confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield on play action. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 47. Throwing Mayfield. And a coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Mayfield off the play fake. His throw incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Mayfield with it once more. Throw there, going to be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. A fourth down, here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the Bucks. The speedster Dante Pettis back deep to return. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Chicago offense set to get started. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 18. Now Fields. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, here's Fields. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why not just handle this one? Get all the yards you needed and then some. And made that snap a huge success. Hey, check back 45. Right. Come on, baby. 
They run with a former Panther. It's Deontay Foreman. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From the 48-yard line, here's second and nine. On the option right is Fields. A little juke. And he gets it down to the 32. Excellent job on the keeper. 20 yards and a first down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. They run it on first with Foreman. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. No score after one on EA Sports. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Fields looking for his running back, and he's got him. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. On the toss, here's Foreman. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. D.J. Moore from four yards out. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, that's just how they drew it up, C.D. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. send the kicking team out there and they will send this one away this taken in at the goal line and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 Tampa Bay they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out they had to punt it away this time hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Staying on his feet. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Like it's been this negatively as he just got back to the line of scrimmage, but when you really analyze it, he took away a big play for the defense, made it an uneventful run because he avoided a sack and didn't lose yardage. They go play action. Mayfield. That'll be taken in downfield by Godwin. 
It's a gain of 35. First and ten, Mayfield. Dancing to his left. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. He couldn't get rid of it. He winds up losing a yard. It's second down. I know there will be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Looking downfield for Godwin. And this is caught inside the five. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Chris Godwin, 43 yards. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guys covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catching them. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Dances by Fields hit, and the ball is loose. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Mayfield now after the fumble recovery. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. To throw Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. From the gun, Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to White. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 
The result only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Another catch by White. Back-to-back -back plays. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover, and they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there, and now they're looking at a first and goal. Now Mayfield. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack. But that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, taken at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know what I think the defense is saying back to them? Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some fields hit and the ball is loose. And the Buccaneers have it. He tried to buy some time to the right. So, Charles, when a guy gets out of the pocket, what's the focus of the quarterback? Most of them keep their eyes downfield. They want to try and make the play throwing the ball. But some of them, they want to tuck it and go. But when they scramble, in this case, as you said, to the right, you're cutting the field in half. So good defenses kind of can converge in that spot, and they don't give you much territory to throw the ball. He had nowhere to go with it. Ends up getting the ball stripped. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games, and we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and this is picked up by the Bears. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion left. A man who led the league in yards per carry last year, it's Khalil Herbert. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. He's on his way. Touchdown, Chicago. Khalil Herbert, 76 yards. And the Bears have retaken a third quarter lead. They blitzed defensively there, but he was able to slip through that first layer, and then he was gone. I think they won the leverage game, didn't they? Yes. Right? They saw the blitz coming. That got to him a little bit, but they leveraged it perfectly and found not just a crease, a gigantic hole. And off he goes, and he's still going all the way to the end zone.
Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Charles, you got to think the number one goal here is ball security. Remember, last drive they coughed it up. Then they allowed the touchdown, and now they're trailing on the scoreboard. Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Mayfield down. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it, and they do so and pick up a first down. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Mayfield. Looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. He completes it to Evans. Ten more there and another first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. And again, it's Mayfield. This is White on the screen. No gain on the screen there at second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. And he's got it. And the Bucs are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Mayfield. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. On second down, they'll run with White. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. A nice run there. Eight yards moves him much closer to the goal line now for third down. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. 
But plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and it's now 17-14. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Now Jones. Jones now on the return. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. And that often runs you into a penalty. So the hold on special teams backs him up all the way inside the 15 to start. On first down, it's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Now a first down throw, Fields. And Fields going to have the first down before sliding to a halt to avoid the contact. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart, took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. First and ten, here's Fields. That is caught by Herbert. He's in the space past the 25, and he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Now that is the two-minute drill at its very best. Get the completion, get a big chunk of yardage, and then get out of bounds to save those timeouts. You cannot do it any better than that. Going on the ground with Homer. And they're knocking on the door now. Is a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10 yard line. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit. Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. That's complete right side to commit. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want him to catch the football first. Late in the game, he's certainly doing everything in his power to buy time for his guys to make a play. But in this case, he's surrounded. And all he has room to do is to get back to the line of scrimmage. Here now, third down. All eyes on fields. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. 
And partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that will make this a four point game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. So Mayfield and the Bucks down 21-17, 53 ticks to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield to throw. Now Mayfield lost the football. And I think the Bears have recovered. They have. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. The Bears offense ready to get going again. And still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he is going to have the Bears first. And that should be the capper. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. For the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. What a ball game this was. What an atmosphere this was. And the home team getting the late touchdown, getting the victory, and now everybody in this building can file away with smiles on their faces. And what do real estate people tell us all the time? It's location, location, location. So being at home, that can be a big deal because remember, they were down to their final chance to retake the lead, 
that home field advantage, I think it helped fuel all of what happened for them down the stretch. A huge win. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.